Okay, so welcome to everybody who's filing in. I'm just gonna give a few seconds here for, for everyone to get in, get settled, and then we will get started. Just want to make sure as many people are in here as possible before we get rolling. So in the meantime, uh, I will mention to everybody here that we will be recording this session. Uh, we'll be posting it on our virtual events page on our website to make sure that you know, anyone who wasn't able to attend live can still see this and get the information. So in the chat uh, for everybody, I'm just gonna post uh, some information on our Privacy Act, but we, you know, we will respect your privacy. Just wanted to make sure that everybody knows about that. But uh, in the meantime, I think we can get started. So hello, everyone, welcome. Thank you very much for taking some time out of your day. Um, I saw that it had started to rain. So, you know, thanks weather, I guess, for driving everybody back inside. Uh, and so we can all attend our virtual information session on Algonquin College's photography program. Uh, typically, you know, at this time of year, we could bring, we have so many amazing studio spaces and study spaces uh, that we usually would be able to bring people in and show them around. And with that not being an option this year, we wanted to do something to make sure that we can still, you know, show that off, that we can bring it out into the world uh, and still give that information. So thank you all very much. I am Sean McMahon. I am the faculty marketer for the School of Media and Design, uh, where the uh, photography program is housed. And I am joined here today by an amazing panel of people. Uh, so maybe we'll just do a quick round of introductions. Uh, we'll start with Tracy. Hi, I'm uh, Tracy Byers-Reed. I am a professor in the photography program. I teach the studio classes in first year, um, two of them, and I teach theory as well. I'm also the first year coordinator. Joy? And <laughs> I'm Joy Covey. Um, I'm one of the other faculty, other professors at the photography program. I teach both uh, first year and second year. So I co-teach with Tracy in studio and with one of our other faculty members in studio um, as well in first year. And then I teach multimedia in second year. Uh, my name is Carson Stewart and I'm just a first year photography student here at Algonquin. And I'm just going to share some of my insights of uh, the program so far this year. And yeah. Great. Thank you all very much. So yes, yeah, so you're going to get a variety of perspectives, uh, both from the, the faculty and coordinator side to the student side. So it's a fantastic, unique opportunity to ask some questions, get some more information on the program, whether you've already applied and you know are just getting some more info before you make that next decision in the, in the registration, or if you're just thinking about applying, uh, there's you know, gonna be a lot to cover here today, so we'll, we'll get started. If at any point, uh, we will be taking questions at the end, so we're gonna kick things off with a presentation that will take you through more info on the program, and then you're gonna get a look at the studio space, and we will wind things up, or wind things down, sorry, with some questions at the end. If you wouldn't mind, when you have a question, uh, you can submit it through the Q&A function that you see on the bottom of the screen. Uh, we will likely be using the chat function to post some links, post some more information so that you'll have those for, for reference later. And so keeping them all in the Q&A allows it to make sure that we're everything is focused and that none of your questions get missed. You can wait until the end to post your question, or if you think of something and you, know, you don't want to lose that thought, go ahead and post it in there and we will get to everything at the end of the session, do not worry about that. Uh, all that being said, well, let's start off with uh, a little bit of an oversight on the photography program itself. I will pass things over to Tracy and Joy. I am just looking for my screen share to make sure I do this correctly. Alrighty, here we go. Uh, we are the Algonquin College Photography Program. Um, we are a, um, we have, oopsie, going a little too fast for myself, rewind. We have a unique um, amongst the college in Algonquin in that we have uh, five full-time faculty members, which means that we have the ability to collaborate between each other. And you really see that in the program itself because 
assignments will, will be started in one class and supported in other classes. So I skipped over my own slide um, and I skipped over Joyce, but that's okay because you've already seen us face to face. And the slide you're looking at is our second year coordinator, Deneen Rickson, with her contact info as well. Um, not that uh, you won't get mine, I'll, I'll at some point rewind and go back and show you that as well. So we are unique in that. And I like to highlight that first off because um, it does mean that in a year like this where everything was very challenging and we had to change a lot. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have a, a dedicated team that um, was able to pivot and, and be very creative. And any of our success for this year really comes from that. Uh, we are a two year program. And what you're seeing right now is the kind of streams that we have in this program. So we like to start with theory, not because I teach it, but because we kind of view that as the foundation for um, understanding the practice of photography. So we, we have a theory course, it runs through first and second semester. We have a history and design stream that runs through first and second semester to kind of give you a bit of a background in where the industry's been and the fundamentals of design. From there, we go into the studio uh, and we put into practice in the studio, the things that we have learned in the theory and the design element. Um, from there, the next step in the process is taking those into the digital course where you would learn about editing and post-production kind of techniques. Um, from there, the image and the course runs into a print uh, class, which then takes the content that's created in the other courses, uh, polishes it up and prints it virtually this year. Um, through VPN. So we've been able to kind of keep that going and we'll show you that when we go on the tour. Um, from there into second year, the lessons and the skills that have been taught in the first year are um, further supported and kind of brought together in multimedia, which is really where photography is kind of going. It isn't just making an image, it's making content and be a content creator and using those techniques in multimedia kind of bring all that all together. Um, and it's really exciting. Joy's first, second year teaching it and, uh, it and where she's had it is really exciting. Because we can't be um, just artists in this world, we have to kind of think about feeding ourselves as well. So the program has a field placement component, which you would be out in the industry, um, working with an individual or job shadowing them. And it's all supported through a entrepreneurship course that we have in our level three. Throughout the program, there is portfolio development. We were just kind of starting with the, the, the first years doing stuff like that in the Second semester, it'll be carried forward into the third and the fourth semester. And we are also gearing up to our annual awards show, uh, which is a student run trade show, typically done face to face. But we've been very fortunate that our professor, Jason Machinsky, has spearheaded um, bringing that as a virtual event and um, bringing together things that we didn't think were possible uh, a year ago. So it's awesome to see. Here's just a little behind the scenes of the before times. So this is Professor uh, Deneen Rickson working with students a few years back now on location. But the crux of what we do is still very much the same. So you would go in to a studio class and be working with the professor. We do have some limited face-to-face -face, uh, this year. So that part hasn't changed too much. Um, the only difference is people are a little bit further apart. Everyone's wearing masks. Um, but we're very much a hands-on kind of learning environment as we're looking at those fundamentals in the studio course. From there, as I said, we go into digital imaging. So uh, this is a quick edit done by Professor Trevor uh, Pearson. And he goes through lots of video tutorial content, which is really the reason he was amazing at moving into uh, the realm of remote teaching because he'd been doing a lot of those techniques um, for about five or six years now. So in your digital course, there's video tutorials to support the online learning that would take place uh, through consultations with, with Trevor. In print, um, it isn't face-to-face -face at the moment, it can't be, but the solution to that is Jason, um, who runs the print lab, has the students uh, connect over VPN and can print from their home computer to the printers in the lab and then book an appointment to come in print and, and pick them up. While he's in class, he has cameras throughout the lab where he's able to show the students the work that they have printed so that they can make judgment calls as to what adjustments they want to make to the print and any kind of fine tuning. 
our award show is what we're gearing up to now. Um, we've been very fortunate uh, to have sponsors that have continued to stay with us, despite the fact that the economy has quite changed over. And we have, I think, uh, Joy, correct me if I'm wrong, about seven awards on the go right now? Yeah, I think it's seven. About seven awards that are sponsored by industry that the second years would be um, putting their images together for at this point. And then we are having a uh, virtual trade show and in addition to the virtual trade show, we have support from alumni that are creating prints and selling them with all proceeds going to Chio. So there's a lot on the go. Um, almost kind of, it seems like so much, too much. Uh, but there's there's a lot on the go. It's very exciting that we are able to do all this, despite the fact that, you know, we're in this lockdown period. Uh, so the date for that is um, April, oh gosh, Joy, help me out, 30th, 30th. did you say? 30th. Thank you. Yeah. April 30th. Um, but if you're at all watching or following us along on Instagram, we would be posting additional details there. And I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, as we go through the tour, we'll show you a few of the points, but it's kind of worth mentioning them at this point. We have what we call the ER, uh, and that is the equipment room. It's not the emergency room, although Brian does, does put out a lot of fires for us. Uh, the equipment room is where you would through being in the program, be able to sign out cameras, lenses, tripods, lights, anything you would need for the assignments. Um, the equipment room has remained open and, and will remain open through, through the lockdowns it has to date. So we should be fortunate that that continues on. Most students ask if they require a camera coming into the program, you do not. Uh, you can bring your own camera if you'd like, but uh, we have cameras for students to sign out from the equipment room in addition to lenses and other peripheral items. The studios, which we'll show you as well, um, are also part of the program. So they are located uh, within our same sort of program area and I'll show you that as we go through the tour. Um, the studios uh, are where we have our studio classes and we have limited, um, some supervised times outside of class time. In a typical year, we would have had a little bit more access, but we are very fortunate to be allowed to have any face-to-face. -face, so there is a little bit of outside time for students to work in the studio and we'll, we'll take you on a tour through that. Employment opportunities. Uh, what kind of people, uh, what kind of work is done after people leave this? I swear I did not create the slide where it says commercial photography at the top because I was a commercial photographer myself. But yes, there are a lot of uh, students that do come out of this program as commercial photographers and wedding and portrait photographers. Those are probably the two biggest kind of job areas. Digital imaging specialists as well. Um, more and more videographers. I know there was a lot more of that kind of happening last year um, with the addition of course, Joy taking over multimedia. A little bit of photojournalism, a little bit of photo technicians um, and, and technical sales reps, marketing, social media. But the biggest one is self-employment. A lot of the students graduating actually do end up um, running their own businesses and working for themselves. I'm gonna throw this to Joy actually to go through a little bit of the alumni uh, cap recap for us. Awesome. Yeah, so this is actually one of um, one of our alumni and uh, he is an incredible photographer. He won several awards um, when he graduated actually at the trade show. So super um, great when you can kind of finish off college on a bang. So Yoni did um, that. He graduated about six years ago and he um, is still working in the industry um, and really kind of pursuing the photography. Uh, he has kind of a fashion side um, to him, portrait photography just some beautiful, beautiful work um, that he has just worked through. Um, I think there's another slide, possibly. Tracy disappeared. Tracy has to get a charger. Aha. Um, Jessica Dietz is a photographer here in Ottawa. Um, you may have heard of her. She does a lot of uh, portrait and commercial um, photography um, for um, some papers in town, some magazines, as well as does some other great causes that she is a part of. She also takes in several of our students uh, for our field placement. Um, so she is such a great resource. And we have some of our alumni that still um, assist and work for her after their field placement as well. So she is a force to be reckoned with and uh, someone we like to definitely take cred that she uh, came here at uh, to Algonquin. And I 
don't. I don't know a Colin Gadet, but he's another uh, fashion photographer um, in Toronto. Um, so he graduated in 2013. So that was actually uh, before my time, but he also has some beautiful work. Um, this program is definitely um, geared for the self-employment. Um, so if you have a desire to um, create your own work, create your own space and your own job and your own um, kind of niche in the industry, um, the training and the technical aspects that we teach you um, definitely um, head you in the right direction for that. Um, gives you kind of that, uh, really walks you through the self-motivation of setting up those plans, working with post-productions and pre-production decks, working with models and even in group work um, and stuff like that, that really sets you up for the industry. And we've really seen that reflected um, in our second years as they go on to graduation and our first years, of course, as well as they are learning. Um, but we really see that as our students um, excel through the, the course. It's something that uh, they we really gear them for is that self um, kind of motivation, self-employment um, aspect of things. I think I might need to help Tracy with technical aspects of the camera, but I'm not sure. Uh <laughs> <laughs> we could keep going and then maybe uh, continue on. Perfect. Um, so again, we have another photographer here, um, Ian Patterson. He is also in Toronto. Um, so Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, that's kind of the, the big kind of hubs for photography um, for our alumni. The, the industry there is strong as well as here in Ottawa. Um, so we kind of spread, our, our alumni spread, but they're also all the way around the world as well. Um, we have international students that come as well. Um, so, but Toronto definitely is a great hub for that. So um, Ian Patterson does portrait and commercial photography there. Um, and again, has some beautiful work, a really nice kind of that moody vibe um, that he's really kind of brought together. And he graduated in 2018. So again, still alumni that we recognize and are excited to see them still doing so well in the industry all these years later. Um, one of my favorite alumni, um, because I used to work for Tracy, um, she is an award-winning photographer here in Ottawa, uh, Grace and Gold Studios, um, so she does all things wedding, um, absolutely incredible photographer, has got published in many, many magazines, and just a lovely human all around, um, so we love, again, taking kind of the credit of she came to our program and is doing incredibly well um, in the industry, so again, um, we have some great alumni that we're proud of, we'll always pull back to Algonquin to say we helped and we saw their creative vision come to life as they were here at Algonquin. And Jody Pudge, she is a food and editorial photographer in Toronto. Um, absolutely incredible photographer. She does a lot for LCBO and different other large um, companies. So down to earth. Um, she comes in, she did our open house or, or our open show, our first day um, AC orientation this year um, on Zoom for our first years. Um, and she is just lovely. She came in a couple of years ago and did a food workshop for us. Um, so again, we create family here in the program. So even when you graduate, um, you don't just get kind of kicked out. We love seeing the work and bringing our alumni back as well to teach our now students. So our alumni work in the industry and then we get to pull them right back in to help our first years and second years um, pursue their dreams in the industry because they're learning from relevant industry um, photographers. So okay. these are some program success factors, things that are going to help you um, if you have these skill sets or something that is you're thinking about getting into the program to kind of work on. Um, so things that can really help you as a student is self-motivation, um, personable and organized, um, enjoy the technical nature of photography. You want to get more in depth into that. And Tracy is incredible at helping with that. Um, have an aptitude for computer technology. Um, we will help you in all of these facets to learn more. So you don't have to have all of these, um, but something that if you have these skill sets will really help you in the program. Good time management. Um, I think we're learning, all of us are learning that on a daily basis, but that is a great thing to come into. Um, problem solving skills. We will also help you figure out those problem solving skills. It's great to have the kind of that direction. Um, our creative. We want you to come. We want you to be creative and have fun and then have a keen sense of entrepreneurship. As you see with many of our alumni that we tagged today, they're all self-employed, started their own business. So come in excited and these are the things that will really help you. I'll pass it back over to you, Tracy. <laughs> all right, so requirements for uh, admission to the program, uh, Ontario Secondary School Diploma, 
with a grade 12 English, 50% or higher. If you are a mature student, um, you need to check with the register for the English equivalency um, testing. And it, in the, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, the uh, mature student needs to be 19 years of older. Um, um, and there is additional kind of things that they need to go through with that one. Um, portfolio is not required, um, which is often a question we get. Um, but uh, the getting into the program is based on availability. Uh, and at this point, we are still open for applicants. The computer requirements, I won't do too much of a deep dive into this one, mostly because it's, it's kind of out of my wheelhouse. I usually pass these questions over to my um, colleague, Trevor Pearson, but you do require a MacBook Pro within, um, the recommendation is he ideally would prefer a two year old one, but within four years um, and the specifications are there. If you don't have a MacBook Pro, uh, we've had to have students that have come in with PCs. They generally do struggle quite hard um, unless they have a higher end PC or are very familiar with working on a computer so that they're able to kind of navigate it itself. Your faculty members are all using MacBooks. So when students come in with PC, it does become a bit of an issue. If you do have specific questions about that, you can contact me through the um, through our website and I'll, I'll direct you to our colleague, Trevor, who is definitely the one to check in with. There is software that we are required for the program. Uh, these are provided by the college, uh, and I know, Carson, you're probably going, what, they're provided by the college? Yes, they will be next year. Uh, one of these softwares was not, but we, through student asking us to do this, have been able to uh, include Capture One in the software that is provided for the students. So you will have Capture One, which is software for tethering and raw processing. You'll also have access to the entire Adobe Creative Cloud um, and Microsoft Office. Sorry, Carson, but you guys are really, you know, he, you got us to get it and, and on it. So that, that's good, uh, good change. Please don't tell the other students just yet. Um, <laughs> do you need a camera? Um, no, you don't need a camera coming in. Uh, we have Canons, Nikons, um, Sony's, all that stuff uh, for, for students to, to um, use. If you are thinking of purchasing a camera because you'd like to have your own. If you want to contact me, I can kind of let you know uh, which cameras will work, but usually it comes down to which ones are compatible with tethering into capture one. So um, that's usually the, the biggest kind of making sure it works for, for um, the, the program itself. How to apply? Uh, ontariocolleges.ca is how you would apply into the program. There's a lot of information from the college on this process. Uh, for us, the if you want to get in touch with us, we have a pretty active social media presence. Uh, we have a website that has FAQs, so um, facts for applicants, additional information about the program and such. We, so we, the website, uh, we don't actually have an active blog so much anymore, but we did in the past. But what we're really, really active on right now is um, through social media. So Instagram in particular, uh, we're doing events and giveaways on that. Uh, so we've had a giveaway for a bag um, that has a camera on it. It was really kind of cool. We have a current giveaway for some um, stuff from, Sh from Shamira. So soft boxes. Uh, I know Jay's wanting to work on a giveaway for new applicants. So if you haven't followed us already on Instagram, please do so. And if you have any work that you would uh, like us to see, because it's really kind of cool to see what people are, are doing before they come into the program, make sure to hashtag it, hashtag applied AC photo, and uh, we'll have a look and see what you're up to. We also have been very active posting a little bit or snippets of our video content that we've been creating kind of as a result of having to work remotely. And those are up on our reels on Instagram, little snippets that give you an idea of what we're doing in the different programs. So there's some for studio, there's a lot more for digital because as I said before, my colleague has been very prolific with doing video content. Uh, and there's one there for theory as well. So that's there if you wanna give a little, get a little idea of what we actually are doing. And that is it, I think from there. Carson, did you have anything you wanted to add about the student perspective before we head on a tour? Yeah, I think a few good things to add to uh, being on like the online environment for being first year is I think going in and uh, people don't really have a keen understanding of what's actually gonna happen, but being through first year and actually just finishing up today, um, I was thoroughly impressed with everything and how it worked out. Um, as Tracy mentioned earlier, how one of our professors, Trevor, 
was a gay kind of getting a jump on a digital aspect of uh, the program, and it was it was very easy to follow, and I, I really did enjoy everything so far. Yeah. Awesome. So, are we ready to tour? I think so. Yeah. Uh, and just a reminder to everyone, because I do see some questions coming in. Uh, absolutely, as you think of questions, feel free to submit them to the Q and A function, and uh, following the tour that's about to begin, we will start taking those questions. Okay. Joy, I have 35% to do this. So we'll be fast. No pressure. No pressure. No excessive talking. Okay. So where I've been sitting this entire time is our faculty office. And actually I'm sitting at Trevor Pearson's uh, desk um, just because he's not around. So your faculty have a shared office, which is kind of fortunate we're here and able to collaborate in a usual year together. Uh, Joy was just sitting in another faculty office and actually Carson, because he had a face-to-face -face class today, is on campus and he's in a third faculty office. So I closed the door on Joy. She's gonna take a minute and just open it up and let us out. Okay. So it's nice that everything for our program is all in the one space. Um, it means that when we are here and not working remotely, it's really easy to find your faculty and it really creates that kind of sense of family. We also like decorating it up quite a bit. Um, so we have large scale prints that we've done as faculty projects in the spring on the walls that you'll see in the back end. And they're really a microcosm of what we do. So they're images that I shot my buddy Trevor has uh, edited, and then the print teacher was doing the printing. So after you leave the faculty office, the next place that you would come to is the equipment room, where the absolutely fantastic, couldn't live without him, Ryan McCosham is here, um, a humble, humble dude. Uh, and he is being, working throughout the, um, the year, as he always does, um, making sure that the students are able to pick up gear and equipment. Um, how many lenses and stuff do we have going out in a typical day? We're 100 and some cameras, but 150 lenses. Yeah. Um, lighting, tempo, probably a couple million dollars worth of equipment. Every year we get giant chunk of money that we spend. Um, so we rent out to people. And then we're here, pretty much like a library system where you kind of scan your cards and you rent out whatever book you need for class, what you need, that kind of stuff. Um, and then we have all Canon, Nikon, Sony, Lumia, Hasselblad, GoPro. Probably a few others I can't think of. Yeah. Yeah, and I got in Sony three things. And potentially adding to it with some mirrorless, maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay. So this is where the equipment room is, right by the faculty office. We have quite a bit of storage for extra stuff that we don't use all the time, which is kind of nice. Um, and then we head into the hallway. We are located in the A building. Um, so that is a <laughs> that is where I am right now. Um, I'm going to just grab my keys and we'll have a quick look in one of the classrooms. We're not using this right now, of course, because we don't have face-to-face -face for um, most of our classroom typing. So we are actually using it as a overflow space for the equipment room so that the students can kind of have two places to drop off. So they will pick up from Ryan often and drop off in this room. And then we can quarantine the gear for a couple of days before it goes out again. And typically we have another person who works into this room. But in a normal year, um, up until March last year, this was the first year classroom where all the first year classes would have taken place with the exception of the studio class. So then we'll head down the hallway. Just make sure that locks so nothing gets stolen. Um, and what we have down this hallway is a bit of a pet project of the print teacher. It is called our alumni gallery and all the images here were done by our alumni Eric Reed. So we do like to foster a community with our grads even after they leave. And all these large scale prints were printed here. The students worked on a project putting them up in conjunction with the print instructor. And the images, as I said, were all done by a past grad from about, I'm gonna say 2017, maybe 2018, um, who is Eric Reed. And he does a lot of street photography, architecture type stuff, really cool looking things. Um, I'm fairly certain that's an image from Scarborough because you know that's where I'm from. Uh, this one is downtown Toronto. So kind of interesting stuff that we like to make the place look like home. <laughs> And as I come down here, although I'll go a little slow so you can enjoy the imagery, but we do have it posted up on our social media. 
in here is our second year classroom, which at the moment we've taken over and are using it as extra space for the second years to cut down their prints. So in a typical year, this is where the second years would have all their classes. At the moment, the second years are using this as an isolation space to come in and get their prints ready for their final portfolio. So just another way that we kind of come up with inventive solutions to work out all the problems we've been facing this year. The next room that we have is, oh, Janine is in here, is our uh, print run. So I will go in here now where we have two faculty members in here. Hello. Hello. So in the print lab, you got it, Claire? Oh, hey, buddy. Um, this is Deneen Rickson, second year coordinator. This is Jason Machinsky, our uh, print teacher. And this is the print lab, which looks very different than it would in a normal year, because it's pretty much rigged up for doing a lot of um, virtual learning. So the students are able to print over VPN uh, from their home, as I said, and Jason has things rigged up so he can show them the prints, they can judge the prints and make adjustments as needed. So now you've seen all the faculty members except for the mysterious Trevor. Mysterious Trevor. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. You too. Okay, so further down the hallway we go. So everything is in the one space, as I said. We have an additional prop room. I won't show you that one, but it is kind of nice to know that we have some additional space for the students to kind of uh, grab props that they would need for assignments and usually in class exercises for the most part. Oh, she left it open, thank goodness. This is our studio space. It is set up right now for the portrait class in first year, which has their face-to-face -face lessons. And they are working on, from the looks of the lighting, high key portraits. We typically have six sets to use, but when you're doing portrait work where you need to have more students working on a set, They've paired it back in. I'm going to go with have three sets set up, four sets set up, okay, so that they're able to maintain the distances that you're, that they need. When we're in here for the commercial class, the students are working independent, so we're able to get six in here. But we have markings on the floor so that everyone is aware of their spacing while they're working in this space. Let's have a. You want to head down this way? So we'll head down so you can see the rest of the space because it is a little bit of an L shape. We have all the lighting gear that you would need. So in the first bank here, these are all speedatrons. So this is high powered flash equipment that gets used starting in second semester. Over here, typically it'd be a little bit more full, but the portrait teachers, the portrait instructors have been using the photogenics for their um, high key portraits. So that's why all this is kind of missing at the moment because it's being used. Um, these are all Noel Richardson tungstens for when we start learning continuous light. We are currently looking at replacing these with some LEDs, um, but that's been in the works for a little bit. I feel that it's closer this year than ever. Uh, here are some Kino flows for video work. Um, and the reason for replacing these with LEDs is so that we can do a lot more video work with both. It makes the systems a little bit more compatible. Lots of light stands, tons of soft boxes all the way down here, which I guess would be hard for Jay to come down and follow me. Um, but pretty much all the soft boxes that you would need. And Ryan, the reason I think he's so make awesome is he's got all the tools that you would need as well, all stored and labeled um, so that you're never at a loss when you're trying to get the shot that you want to get. So other than that, that's pretty much the tour of the space. Um, I guess Joy and I will try and quickly head down so that we can answer some questions. Um, but maybe, Sean, is there any questions if you can read out? Maybe I can answer them as we walk. Yeah, for sure. We have a lot of questions uh, already. So here we go. Um, I am thinking of taking this program after retiring from a 30 plus year career in the military. How much of the program is geared towards learning photo skills versus history, business and entrepreneur focus? OK, so. We actually just had somebody in the exact same situation graduate last spring. Um, he was in the military a long time. 
it's not a hobbyist course. Um, I wouldn't say that. The history and entrepreneurship are two, two courses, history being in first semester, entrepreneurship being in the third level of the course. Uh, the bulk of the education, I guess, would be within using cameras. There are five studio courses. Multimedia would add two more that are very hands-on. Digital has four courses. Uh, print has four courses. There's a much heavier weight towards hands-on than those um, more classroom-based classes, if that kind of answers the question. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, as we're going along, if hearing any of the answers, you know, you have any follow-up questions, absolutely just keep putting them into the Q&A and we will, we will get to everybody. Uh, hello, thank you for this useful Zoom meeting. You are very welcome. I have a Nikon I'm going to 3,500. That's how I'm going to say it. Will it be useful for me during my two years studying photography? Off the top of my head, it is not coming up as one of the cameras that is not compatible with Capture One. If you can quickly Google search Capture One camera support, and it should come up with a page that gives you the brand names. If Nikon is there, click Nikon will be there. Click on Nikon. The 3500 should be there. I do not recall any issues with it uh, being compatible with Capture One. Uh, so that is fine. In terms of lenses compatibility, you would have very minor compatibility issues with some of our lenses, um, but it would be very, very small. There's some Nikon lenses that um, aren't compatible with that type of camera, like the full frame ones because that camera uses a different autofocus system, but it's very minor. So yes, it would be compatible. Double check capture one though. Uh, from a student perspective, what is it like uh, doing the program online? Yes, I think it's my time to answer that question. Um, so personally, from an online perspective, um, and I can I kind of answer two for one because there's another one saying um, being online and in class. So yes, there is uh, in-person and online classes and courses. Um, and being being in the city like Ottawa that we are, I find going out and kind of getting that field work that you would usually have in the studio is pretty doable. And also, um, for example, having a studio class at home where we pick up our gear and do it there. Uh, being able to set up and kind of work around issues on your own, I found was the was a very big learning curve, and it taught me lots throughout the entire program. Um, yeah, like I think the way the faculty and everything have been able to uh, like change the um, the course to be able to be online has been very good, and uh, yeah, I would say I recommend it. But I'm already in it, so it's been great. <laughs> Um, there is uh, another kind of a question about the student perspective. I'm not sure if you'll be able to speak to it. Uh, just wondering if you're on residence while you're taking the program. So I'll ask that first. Are you yeah. by chance in residence? Oh, you are. Yeah. I, um, oh, then perfect. Yeah, they're just looking for yeah, uh, kind for of sure. what that experience is like. Absolutely. So um, I actually just moved out of residence and got a house just down the street. Um, but for the residents and being on campus, um, I was luckily in. I'll, backtrack a little bit before I was able to uh, join the program I decided to come down and tour the facilities and tour the program and that's what got me to go to Algonquin was the was the actual facilities so the residents I was very impressed with um, the average layout for that room is it's called a I think it's a like hotel style so there's two rooms with uh, separate beds and walls um, and a little kitchenette and they're very fair size um, and rules with COVID, like during residence was, uh, you're allowed to have four people in a room. And other than that, that's the restrictions that they had and the no visitors. Um, the food facilities on residence are great. They're open almost around the clock. Um, and to answer the question about mainly being stuck in your room, I found myself being almost out of my room more uh, going into the downtown and shooting and getting photos with uh, classmates. And yeah, it was definitely a very good positive uh, experience overall so far. Great. Uh, and this one, along similar lines, are there still opportunities to meet people in the program with the program predominantly being online? 
Yeah, I can touch on that a little bit as well. Um, myself and a good group, about four or five classmates, we've been able to uh, create like a pretty strong knit little circle of uh, being able to go out. We'd have a routine of going out every single weekend to downtown and getting like kind of street candid photos of people and kind of turned into six to seven hour shoots some days, but it was very fun and you get to meet lots of people. So, yeah. Uh, for the computer, are there other options besides a Mac? My colleague does not like me to say there are, <laughs> um, but the reality is other students have used Mac, uh, have used PCs. Uh, if it's a Chromebook, absolutely not. It's got to be something that at the very least can run uh, Photoshop and probably be on a web at the same time. Most of the students that have been with PC have switched over about halfway through. So if you have a PC that you think will work um, and you don't want to sink your money into a Mac just yet, you could wait and see. But it is a Bit of a challenge mostly because the they just don't have the, the same processing capabilities and most people who do purchase the pcs tend to go with the lower models okay thank you uh we did touch on this a little bit uh if there are in-person classes as well as online i'm not sure if we have anything more we want to kind of expand on there it is a little confusing i guess so because we have both anything that is able to be online. So in your first semester, that's pretty much, that is everything except for the studio course. For the studio course, what we've done is we've been limited to nine people in the studio because of the studio shooting spaces. We like to even have it smaller and have it six plus a faculty member. So the class is divided up into smaller groups. Couple of different ways that it's handled with different faculty is either video content of what would typically be the demo or the lesson is given ahead of time so that the students can watch that so that when they come in, they can make the most of the studio time that they have. So they're just shooting with somebody there to kind of help and guide and provide support for them. Um, another option is one of the other courses has gone with having one week as an in-person demo and the other week as an alternate a time for the students to shoot, correct, Joy? I think that's how you guys are doing portrait. So we still do the videos beforehand as well, and then a very small demo, and then they also you also shoot that week as well. So you get two weeks to shoot, but one is a little bit smaller. And that's really looking at the difference of shooting with portrait. You're dealing with an interpersonal skill that takes a little bit more time to develop. So there's a bit of a difference there between just learning a hardcore uh, tech lesson. So the face-to-face -face is limited. We're one of the only um, programs, we are the only program under uh, design that is allowed to have any face-to-face. -face. Um, and for that, we have to kind of abide by strict, strict guidelines. There is a lot of video content that's created by all the faculty members to kind of support that, um, including lots of Zoom calls. Um, Joy and I both walk people through complete lighting sets remotely. The other reason for the, the video content is we do have students that are immune compromised and cannot come in face to face. So most of the studio content um, I'm going to, I can't speak 100% Joy, but correct me if I'm wrong, is being run tandem. In other words, there's a face to face element and there is alternate instructions for everyone who is unable to attend face to face, either because they're immune compromised or heaven forbid, um, they can't come to college because they're either exhibiting COVID symptoms or have COVID, which we've had all of those instances happen, unfortunately. Um, so we are, while we are still trying to maintain that very strong face to face element, being cognizant of the fact that we, we have to be flexible. I think flexible has really been the, the mantra this year. Okay, uh, the next question I've seen actually come up in a few different forms. Uh, so this question is how many students are in the program? Uh, and I also saw uh, another one that was how big is the first year class? So we can kind of, I think, cover that all in, in one go here. So usual first year class starts at about 78. We did not start at about 78. I think we started about 60 this time round. Uh, we currently are at about 40 in the first year class. We typically do lose that kind of percentage, but it was also a little bit more because there were um, some students that were having struggles with, with online and other kind of things that, that were outside the program that kind of put the pressure on that. 
Uh, so we are nicely at a group of, of 40. Um, we probably will lose a couple more going into third year. So we'll have about 30. Joy, how many do we have in second year? Um, in second year, we have 28 at the moment. So not as big as usual, but not, 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 not very small yet. I think we were smaller in the strike year. Yeah. And like we're normally for second year, we land around 32 to 38. Sometimes we've hit like 41, but most of my experience with second year has this, that size is very consistent to what we're used to. Yeah. In a typical year right now, we'd probably be about 55 to 60 in first year. Okay. Thank you for this meeting. Again, you are very welcome. Are there international students in the program? Yes, there are. Um, so we have, oh, I want to say about four this year in first year, and I can think of two off the top of my head in second year, Joy. Yep. Maybe yep. four? No, two for sure. Two for sure. In second year? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we have about four, I think, in, in first year right now. Okay, so this is a follow-up from earlier about the Nikon 3500s. Uh, so it was looked up. For Capture One, my camera is listed, but it does not support tethered slash live view. Does that rule it out? Live view is kind of cool to have. Uh, tethered, the only, so I wouldn't say it's ruled out altogether. I would probably discourage it from when you are shooting in the studio because the tether part is really kind of so handy. Um, but for the first semester stuff, yes, you'd be able to use it. After that, you can borrow from the equipment room. Or wait for the update. Capture One always kind of updates stuff too. Okay, uh, out of the career paths and options, roughly how much is uh, portrait, portrait, and how much is landscape and objects, animals? Um, I would say that there's probably more portrait, more commercial than landscape. Um, that is not usually one of the, the kind of areas that is high generating in terms of income. Um, those, those areas that are more kind of artistic, a lot of people will use that more to supplement income as a hobby. Um, or getting editorial kind of work from that sort of thing. So magazine publications, the amount of work in our industry that actually is from uh, landscape, wildlife, that sort of stuff is actually proportionately really small compared to portrait would probably be the most in commercial would probably be the second most. Uh, does choosing your camera gear like Sony or Canon or Nikon depend on your own hands-on experience? It really comes down to personal preference. So um, I tend to like Nikon until they do something stupid. Um, I like them just because of the ergonomics where they put their dials for where the aperture and the, the shutter are. It's as silly as that. They are as good as Canon. Canon is as good as Nikon. It's total personal preference. Um, I know Carson's nodding along because he's a huge Canon fan. Um, and so is Joy and I'm speaking into a Canon right now. Um, a lot of it comes down to personal preference, which is why it's really beneficial that students don't have to choose before they come into the program. They can try them all out. And we just have a student who um, told me yesterday on a call, he's been using his, uh, the program's Nikon, highest end Nikon camera all year and Carson flipped him and now he's, uh, he just bought a Canon. I like Canon a lot, but Nikon is good, but I'm definitely in the Canon camp. <laughs> Canon annoyed me way back in the, the 1980s when they switched the lens mount and I kind of holding a grudge on them. See, but I did start in the program as a Nikon when I was a student, I was full Nikon. I invested in Nikon, got a camera and everything. And then I graduated and moved into the Canon for the color and for the video aspect of it because I like motion and Canon nailed that really well, which is why I, I still like Nikon and I teach Nikon, I teach both, but I'm, I'm definitely a Canon fan. Okay, our next question, uh, again, I think we did touch on this a little bit, uh, Tracy, in one of your previous answers with how many days are you online versus in person? Um, so, yeah, you're, you're mostly online. Um, in first year, you'd be one day you'd be coming into the college unless you're coming in to pick up gear. Uh, Carson, right now, you're one day as well in person still? Yeah, yep. Yep. 
That might change into winter next year because I think the wish is that the studio course continue, both studio courses continue the whole length of the winter with face-to-face, -face, whereas this semester we switched off and did half and half just because we wanted to ease the pressure with the studio. Yeah. Um, but that probably would be into next winter unless we're fully open, the very least you'd be two days a week. Uh, how likely is the primary online format to stick if things do clear up and full time on campus is possible? Uh, <laughs> I, I was having this conversation with a, a faculty member earlier this week. Um, for the fall, it will be remote with online uh, with uh, face to face for studio. We aren't sure what the winter would look like at this point. We're being told that it will, it may be face-to-face, -face, um, it may be online. I don't know how much we will still accommodate the online once we are fully face-to-face. -face. It's an interesting conversation because we have all this content built. So there doesn't seem to be anything kind of preventing us from doing that, but it really depends what after the pandemic looks, looks like. And I, I can't really give you a definitive answer. Yeah, there are, and I'll, I'll post it uh, in the chat as well. There is our resources on the Algonquin College site. I believe it's algonquincollege.com slash coronavirus, but I'll be sure and, and post where you can find news and updates. So when things start to come out about the winter semester, that will be a, a good place to look to see where, where things are at. Uh, here's a question I am very glad someone asked because if they hadn't, I would have. Was just wondering what tethered slash live view is. Ah is magic. Um, so it literally feels like it from someone who started in film. What we actually would be, what we do is we have, it's what I'm doing right now, thanks to Joy for the video end, we have a tethering cable. So I have this orange tethering tool, which means that I can connect my camera to the computer, shoot to the computer and see everything as it comes up. So when you're shooting with flash, you can see it right on the screen that you'll eventually be using. So it means that I have much more accurate results when I'm learning lighting or when you're learning lighting, we can use digital readouts right on the, um, I keep pointing to skin tone because I'm, I'm seeing my face, um, but studio, we do that quite a bit where I can tell if I've got the exposure and the density qualities correct lighting. Um, basically it lets us live capture and the live view portion means that I can use the video stream off the camera as I'm shooting into capture one so that I can position things around and kind of play with the composition on the screen and see everything in real time. It's used quite a bit in the industry. Are mirrorless cameras acceptable? <laughs> Carson, you want to field this one? Yeah, um, so I entered the program shooting mirrorless and flipped cameras around and, and still shooting mirrorless. And I actually do enjoy it quite a bit. Um, being in the studio, you can kind of see with mirrorless having an electronic viewfinder, you can see exactly what the image will look like before you take the photo, which I find a very big bonus. It felt a little bit like cheating in a way, um, especially with like the eye detect features in portrait. I, I double checked, I was like, can I use this? Is this okay? But use it to the best of your ability and it's been, it's been good. So this was our first year with having probably more mirrorless than we have had before and um, embracing it because why not? Um, and yeah, the mirrorless, the students with mirrorless, I've noticed had a less of a hard time with judging exposure, less of a hard time with judging lighting. Focus is very rarely an issue on their images. So they can then kind of Di not have to digest that di that um, technical stuff as much. They can focus on the creativity. And when Carson brought his camera in when we were doing um, the shine flute, so rotating the play of focus, it was really, uh, it made that job so much easier. Uh, last question in the Q&A, and I do see one over in the chat. Uh, so we'll cover, uh, we will cover both. And again, if you have any more questions, now is definitely the time to get them in. Uh, the question Q and A. Any info about co-op? Okay. Usually, I, I defer this one to my colleague who I just saw leave. Um, the co-op it's it's a field placement, and there's a distinction between that and co-op. It is 80 hours. Uh, there's a course that is supporting it. It's called entrepreneurship. It's in level three, and the students will, with the assistance of a faculty member, um, find a photographer or someone who is in a related field because there is quite a wide 
variety of uh, placements that, that happen. And they will work with that person um, for 80 hours, or they will work with a few different people for 80 hours because COVID's kind of changed that, that kind of circumstance up a, a bit. And there's a lot more students doing a couple of hours with a bunch of different people rather than the collective with, with the one. Um, it is unpaid um, and it is uh, just an opportunity for the student to um, get that industry experience. We say the students can listen to us for two years and we've told them everything we know and we've got experience hopefully enough street cred um, but but when they come back from field placement they'll, they'll start talking about things they learned on field placement and you'll be thinking hmm pretty sure I taught you that in the second semester but it's just that that hearing from the industry is, is such a strong component and it's just it's the the field placement is having the opportunity to work with someone in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I would like to add as well this year in the middle of the pandemic um, all of our field placement people that are taking our students have been absolutely incredible. So they've been meeting with them on Zoom. They've been doing mentoring with them on Zoom. Um, they've been sending them digital work and they've been able to get like feedback on that. And so the industry has been so accepting of all of our students um, that most of them have fulfilled their placements even in the middle of this pandemic. So also don't be worried about that because we really do have a good collaborative um, industry that wants to work with you guys as students, um, even in this middle of the pandemic. So it's been really encouraging for us to see and for the students as well. Um, they have been able to get those 80 hours, no problem during this time. Great, uh, I'll do the, the chat question because I know that one came in a little bit ago and then we'll move back over to the Q&A. Uh, do students collaborate with other arts programs for special projects? Not currently, um, mostly because it's very hard to do that during the pandemic. Uh, in the past, there has been collaborations with other areas. Uh, last year, the students were did, did a uh, fundraiser for the for Chio with the um, the hair salon area where they did the before and after photos during the hair cutting clinic. So that was kind of fun. Um, but that was in 2019 in the fall. Bef prior to that, there was some collaboration with um, the uh, hospitality where they were doing um, collab work with the, the students that were doing. Um, the words are escaping me at the moment, uh, food. So they were, they were plating uh, food and doing, doing shoots with them. There aren't any current uh, collabs that I'm aware of. Uh, Joy, anything? Not at the moment, eBay kind of? But kind of, but that's field placement related ish. Yeah. yeah. So this year, we used to for also worked with our modeling agency in the past as well and collaborated with them so that the students got to shoot some models in the local area that were new talent, and then they would trade services. Um, but again, due to the pandemic, that has not in, been able to happen, but that's something that we have done in the past and we will hopefully be bringing back once this is over because that's a great collaboration with models in Ottawa. We also did event shooting for hospitality as well in the past. That was a huge one last year. Um, got cut short with the pandemic. Okay, so we have a few more in the Q&A. Uh, you've mentioned level three in third year. I thought this was a two-year program. Tracy accidentally said that. I accidentally <laughs> said that, sorry. Level three is, uh, is the fall semester in second year. Sorry, it is two year. I can feel my coffee wearing off. <laughs> That just means more, Tracy. More oh, coffee. I know. You don't uh, have to tell me that. <laughs> not a question, but a comment. Thank you. Can't wait to start. Excellent. Awesome. Both, both can't wait to have you in the fall and happy that you, you know, uh, got the information that you were looking for. Uh, okay. Is there a place to look at all the equipment, books, et cetera, that I need for the program in fall 2021? Um, so join maybe you can find it a little quicker because the computer is a little too far for me. There's an FAQ page on our uh, website that maybe if Joy can pop the link to, in the chat, it should give you a list of all the things that you need to know for coming into the, the program. Almost. Can you find it? <laughs> yes. Give me a second. Grab the well, right the one here. Yeah. And two, while that's happening, oh, sorry, uh, while that's happening, I'll just jump in to say that is the final question we have in the Q&A. So we will, you know, give a few minutes if anyone has any more questions. Every, you got all, everyone here, everyone's ready to give you that information. So make sure to get in. I wouldn't mind adding if people have uh, questions about residents and things like that from a student perspective. 
Um, if it's okay, I can add some inf contact information for myself and we can book a, we can set up a call or something if you have questions like that, that you wouldn't mind asking. I think that'd be all right. If you're comfortable doing it, yeah. Absolutely. Yep, yeah. yep. that's yeah. my yeah. answer as well. Like, if, okay. if, you're, if you're down, let's do it. All right, I'll, uh, I'll throw my Instagram in the chat and I'm more than happy to book, or not book, sorry. <laughs> you guys can message me, we can do a Zoom call or whatever you guys would like. And check out Carson's work as well because he's been doing a project for one of my classes. <laughs> That'll be nice for you guys to see what he's been doing. Let's double check. It's all related to coffee yeah. too. <laughs> There's a little theme of uh, cameras and coffee going around. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be happy to answer any question in the program or campus related. And I did two uh, earlier posts if anyone, and we can post email addresses again uh, as well. If anyone following the session, you know, comes up with a follow-up question that they didn't have a chance to ask or anything like that, our coordinators are, are more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, you can send them an email. But in the meantime, I did see a question pop in. Understanding that with self-employment, salaries can vary. What is your experience with what an average income is working full-time? I'm going to throw that one over to you, Joy. So that's a, that's a great question. Um, again, as said, salaries can vary. It depends what industry that you want to be in. Um, I will say entrepreneurship in um, your third semester with Deneen Rickson will go into all of that detail of how to... Um, get your pricing set up, your invoicing set up and looking at all of those um, different things. So as said, it depends what industry that you're in. Um, also at the same time, if we bring in COVID into it, that's a whole other um, kind of gamble. Um, so I would say, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to give you an actual salaried um, set amount that you would make in a year because if it's based on if you do weddings, you're obviously probably gonna be able to make more, you book you know, weddings every weekend, if you're a commercial. Again, so there is, it's a very varied, um, a lot of, I also need coffee. Um, there's a variable of what your salary would be. There's no definitive answer, but we will help you establish your pricing um, and know how to invoice properly and price properly with um, for your clients. The other variable is of course, where you're located. So the reason I threw it to Joy is because I worked in the Toronto area. So my experience is completely gonna be different than what it would be in the in the Ottawa area. Mm -hmm. um, so where you're, you're located makes a big difference too. I can also ask answer the next question of how much of the program focuses on video um, because I teach video um, in second year um, but Trevor also teaches video in first year as well in second semester so we don't necessarily focus on it predominantly um, it is a side thing that we expand on um, but it definitely in second year I teach you um, more the depth of video creating productions, working with crew, um, and having different, like more cinematography. We're also, I'm, I just inherited the course as my first year running it um, fully through. And so I have lots of, lots and lots of dreams for the um, coming year. So be excited for your second year um, that how I'm going, so Carson gets to be excited of how I'm gonna grow video into again, what we see on social media and bringing onto your website and just the relevancy of video is definitely something growing in the industry. And we see that here in the program and wanna make sure that we are working to that. So it is um, only in one course, um, but in that course, you'll really learn a lot and it expands from everything you've learned in photography. That's the great thing about video. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So a couple more questions popped in as well. Uh, do I just need to know the basics of cameras coming into this program? Uh, I'll fill that one. Actually, you don't. <laughs> it's, uh, it would be helpful. Um, but we start from the, the very, very basics um, with the assumption that students are coming in with no knowledge because we're not asking for a portfolio. So the first three weeks, I usually say if you've not had any photo experience, we'll feel like there's a lot coming at you. If you've had a bit, it feels like a review. Um, if you've had a lot, then then hold on tight. We'll get we'll kind of get it ramped up after that. But the, the game plan is and we have been able to year after year um, bring students in who who didn't even know how to hold or let alone what a DSLR was. Digital single lens reflex camera. 
I might pop in really quick to answer that five and a half hour attend the program just because my computer battery is a bit low, but I'm for sure. Yes. Yeah, if that's okay. Yeah, uh, I'll just read it. Uh, so for Perfect. um I'm traveling five and a half hours to attend the program in the fall. Would you say the program is pretty collaborative, which allows uh, many to meet new people? So to touch on that, I was in the exact same boat. I live about five to five and a half hours away um, and doing the commute, uh, done it a few times here and there throughout the year, uh, being pretty much collaborative and definitely allows you to meet people, whether it's in program or being able to share your work on Instagram, a few models and individuals have contacted me to do shoots, um, which also just kind of expands the, uh, the people you know and things like that. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, what would be the most popular employment after graduating? Just wondering if there is many real estate photography opportunities. So we teach you, uh, that's a great question. We definitely teach you um, and we actually just, Last week, I think, got our interior architecture um, assignment handed in by our students. So we definitely teach those aspects um, so that you guys can definitely do real estate photography. Um, there is opportunities, again, to assist. And we highly encourage that when you graduate. Also networking and getting to know um, the industry um, on social media, following the people that you would want to work with or to collaborate with or get field placement with. We, we talk about this um, as you are a student. And so basically encouraging you to create that network um, so that, yeah, you could get established in real estate photography. Um, if you know agents, get connected. It's all about networking in photography, which really helps you kind of land where you want to land um, in photography or land somewhere new that you didn't expect um because you have that network of people that uh, you, you pull from and you can and work with in the industry so the industry is very welcoming um especially like in ottawa we found the industry that we work with the field placement is very welcoming to our students uh, with the online aspect how many hours are actively online in zoom and how much is asynchronous uh, I'm going to say that majority of the majority of it is probably active. Um, the only course really that goes full blown in the asynchronous is the digital course. And again, that's in part because the teacher was just ready to go that way. And it makes sense um, for that program as well. With the studio, about half and half would probably be um, on Zoom and the other half is asynchronous. With theory, it's almost 100% um, during your Zoom call. With, with print, it'd be 100% during your Zoom call. With history, I'm going to go with he's probably 100% during a Zoom call. Um, really, there's only a couple of courses where it definitely makes sense to have content that is provided ahead of time um, to work independently and then touch base with the, with the professor. Okay, and what is at this moment our final question in the Q&A. Speaking of cinematography, are there any students uh, working in the movies? I think Brian McNally would be our closest reference to that. Um, so we do have an alumni that does um, do has short films um, and very, very good at it, has his own company um, or is starting back up his own company. He also has another job as well. Um, so yeah, we definitely have students that have come out and gone into that side of things. I've also seen, you know, as I'm tracking the students, I've seen several uh, new videos and, and things that they've learned from multimedia brought into their businesses and into their brand and that they've incorporated for their clients. So I could see a few more out of last year's grads. They, uh, there was a few of them that were very strongly leaning towards that way. They just haven't had time yet. Okay, and that does bring us uh, through to the final question that we had in the Q&A. Uh, so we will probably start winding. Oh, oh, I spoke too soon. In the program, uh, is there minor courses you take and photography would be your major? Um, no, it's not. Uh, it's not kind of like a university where you have majors and minors. It's uh, all the courses that are part of the program are, uh, with the exception of gen eds, required. Um, so there aren't any kind of electives. The only ones that you would have choice with would be the gen eds, and that is in your uh, level three so the fall of your second year everything else is required so no 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 majors photography would be the major okay so maybe we'll do 
Uh, one last kind of round table, if there's anything, uh, anyone, anyone of Joy or Tracy or Carson, if there's anything you wanted to add as a final thoughts that uh, maybe we didn't cover or anything you just think anyone coming into the program might want to know. We've covered a lot today. So if yeah, the answer is, if the answer is no, that is absolutely okay. <laughs> That was an action-packed hour, oh, so hopefully, so yeah, hopefully everyone who uh, joined us here today, you know, is is leaving with your questions answered and the information that you need. As mentioned, uh, if if you come up with anything later on, you can send an email. Uh, go to the program page. You can find contact information for a, a lot of the people that uh, are here today. Tracy, uh, Deneen, who you saw uh, during the tour. Oh. Sorry, I'm trying to put my email address in and I sent it to Carson by accident. <laughs> so Carson's probably going, I know your email address. <laughs> uh, just one go. comment just popped up in the Q&A to say thank you very much for all the info. So great, absolutely, you're, you're very welcome. Uh, so with that, I think that is, our, that is our information session. So thank you all again. Oh, let me just make sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, another thank you. Perfect, just don't, didn't want to miss a question. <laughs> So thanks and uh, take care, everyone. Have yourselves a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.